Good afternoon, YouTube. It's Thunder Dan back at it again with another episode of 302 Fishing. I got off of work early today, and you know what that means. It's fishing time, guys. So as promised, uh, in between our predictable weekly episodes, I bring you these short little episodes. And again, we're going to continue on with the Top Water Series. Summertime is my favorite time, and we are going to be using my second favorite bait next to the buzz bait to try to catch these big old fish in these hard conditions. Because again, it is the dog days of summer, as we mentioned to you multiple times already. Uh, it gets brutal out here in Delaware when it comes to the humidity and the heat and everything else. So luckily, uh, we're down into the 80s instead of the uh, thousands of degrees that we were last week. But we are going to go ahead with the hollow body frog. That's my second favorite bait. I'm always traditionally using walking baits, but today I'm going to use a variation that I've never ever used in my whole life. But we're going to try and we're going to see if we can elicit some responses from this derivative of this hollow body frog. And we are talking about popping frogs. The brand that I'm picking here is Lunker Hunt. That's called the Popping Frog uh, Kraken Series. And the two colors I'm going to try that are going to compete against each other. We're going to try Woody, which is almost like the hatch. Uh, that is around here to match us almost the bait that comes around these ponds uh, right around this time and in the springtime. And then the second is going to be Nightshade, which is a much darker color that creates silhouettes of a frog. And uh, hopefully we can get some responses off of this. So give me a couple seconds. We're going to tie these on here. I'll go ahead and talk about what I do to these frogs and the cadence and every other silly thing that you have to do in order to go ahead and try to attract these fish on biting these particular baits. But boy, when you catch one, man, you know it. And they slam that rod and you bring it in there and you're just thoroughly excited, even if it's one fish you catch in a day. Because these kind of baits will give you those gigantic blow-ups if you're patient enough. But I'm going to make the walk over here. If we're lucky, we're going to have cattails around. We're going to have algae around. We'll cast out in the open area. And somewhere, someplace, we're going to get a fish on. All right, so I'm walking steadily up on the pond right here. I'm noticing there's, you know, algae, but not thick. But if you look to the left-hand side, as soon as I go over here and past these trees, all of the algae is pushed over and to the backside. So you remember the last time we were at this pond, there's barely an inkling of algae, except for over in this corner here a little bit. But as the summer days get hotter and hotter, these things start to bloom and bloom, and more than likely, it's gonna cover the whole pond. So we're, we're going to deal with what we have right now. I'm going to start throwing against these cattails right here and over these openings. And I'm going to start with the nightshade right here in the open area. And then with the woody, my attack is, because it's the bigger one, uh, frog that is, we're going to attack all that heavy cover over there. But let's get down there, let's start fishing, and let's see which one produces the best and which one gives me that quality fish. All right, as I said, I was gonna start with nightshade, but again, before we get started on fishing with this frog right here, uh, there are a few things you can do to the frog before you even put the bait in the water, and again, increasing your chances of trying to catch fish. Nobody says you can't throw the frog right out the box, but that's fine if you wanna do that. If you like just the popping noise, that's good. But as soon as you take it out, the main thing is you're gonna be looking at the legs. Are they long enough, are they short? or what's going on with this frog. So Lunker Hunt is very, very smart and they're ahead of the curve. And they've already got the legs right at the proper length. Because the rule of thumb is, is when you turn that frog upside down, just like that, the legs should be right at where the nose is at. That way this uh, frog can be walked across the water properly if you're using a walking frog. Or the same thing with the popping, it doesn't matter. So that's one less thing we have to do right now, but if you do have it really long, because sometimes they come like eight feet long, you gotta trim all that excess off uh, in order to, you know, to make this thing just short enough so that when these fish go to strike that bait, they're striking the bait itself. Because again, if it's way long right here, chances are gonna be striking all of the legs here and not be anywhere near the bait whatsoever. Secondly, on this particular bait, and as well any other frogs doesn't matter what color it is i'm a huge proponent of rattles i used to use glass tube rattles but of course when you put more than one in there they shatter and then you got crappy glass and ball bearings floating all over the place in there and it just doesn't sound right uh, once uh, that happens so i was able to go ahead and search online for a little bit and i found a variation of, of the glass tubes i never knew they sold these kind of glass tubes but they have plastic rattle tubes that are for trout fishing 
They're super skinny, maybe about that long, and they perfectly fit right in the gap of the frog right here, right where the hook is at. And usually you can put one, I always put two maybe, just to create as much chatter as I can. Uh, again, have that frog, as if you're skimming across these uh, uh, mounds right here, they can feel that vibration because they can't really see the bait itself. Lastly, uh, the woody, which is what I get ready to pull out of my pocket right now, your lighter baits, especially the ones that look like the hatch that's around here, the, the bait that's around here, which is the wolf frog uh, or any species of frog that you have, they always have the white underbelly. And again, they got the yellow under, uh, part of the underbelly too as well, but it's always plain. So what I try to do is I, whether it works or not, I don't know, I just do it just because out of a habit, I'm old and you know, I follow through with what my dad did is you take a Sharpie and you push little tiny dots all over the body right here. Cause I'm, every time when you're a kid and you pick that frog up and you look under the underbelly, you're always seeing those little dots in there. So that's another little hack that I do on this frog. Again, same thing. I have two uh, rattles in here just to make a lot of noise. But again, with that smaller bait, we're gonna try all these open areas right now and see how uh, nightshade does. And that deep, dark, heavy vegetation, we're gonna go with the heavier one. Again, I think this one will bring out the big ones out from underneath there. But we're just gonna figure it out and see what these fish want. Uh, it is a little early right now, and uh, I was gonna try to get up the crack of dawn, but it didn't happen. But um, I can feel the heat on the back of my neck already. It's 10 o'clock. And uh, again, you got that noonday sun that's gonna be here and things will probably die off. So for the two hours we're gonna be out here, we're gonna try to make something happen. There you go, there's a hit right there. Fish on, we already got fish. It's two casts in guys and we got one already. All right, it's a nice little blow up. What do we got here? Eh, about a pound and a half. Boom, nightshade. <laughs> oh, she's feisty as anything. All right, guys, look at all that salad that's on there. It looks like he's got a toupee. <laughs> let's get that. There you go. <laughs> all right, let's get all this. Uh, actually, let's get the bait out of the fish's mouth first. But uh, that was nice. At least you didn't have to wait long for a hit. <laughs> all right. I say a pound, guys. I was getting a little too... Uh, uh, jumpy with the weight there because again it was the first fish but uh, we're gonna go put her in the water I'm sure there's a big one around here somewhere so she's gone all right so we're gonna take a look what we're looking at you obviously you can see you the big lumps of algae that are right on here but just below the surface you can see it's this fine fine mat it literally looks and feels like hair but this is all the stuff that we have to deal with I mean you know, when you hit a fish, you think, oh my God, this thing weighs about six pounds. And of course you come back and you got a, a one pounder sitting on the end of here and about five pounds of uh, <laughs> uh, mat and algae. But uh, give me a couple seconds to get this uh, off of here. We'll throw that back out there and see if there's a couple more over in this area. All right, we're all prepared and ready to rock and roll. Let's give it another toss. <laughs> come on, you would think they would hit my bait. Cause it's me, 302 fishing. <laughs> We're trying to put on a show here, guys. Come on, jump on. There we go, guys. There's a fish on right there. Up, oh, short struck it. I don't know how that fish could have missed it. It was right out in the open. There was nothing around it. <laughs> One thing, guys, when you're out here, man, is always be visual. Look around. See what's going on, guys, because like I said, sometimes if you're turned this way, you can hear something on your right-hand ear, and you turn around, and you see a big old swirl because a fish might have come by because you heard it splash. Not like a, you know, a turtle where it just pops its head up and just brings it down because you can't hear it. It's so silent. But you know the telltale signs of a fish jumping in the water and how big it is roughly uh, when, when it does that. So if you see it, try to attack it. But generally speaking, the big ones sit right in this corner here. Every once in a while there's a big one over here. You saw that one big miss I had with that buzz bait. And then there's always one sitting over by that uh, sewer that we're gonna go by a little bit later on today. And I'm keeping my rod tip high, mainly because uh, again, you got the popper nose. You don't want that digging down into the algae. But again, you don't wanna pop too hard to where the frog skips and goes and jumps off of uh, 
the pads kind of like this see how it comes like that and just jumps off because uh, obviously you're not going to get any strikes that way so you want to kind of be ginger it's kind of you got to feel it out man just a slight little tag just keep it bouncing on top of that so they can feel those rattles as you're coming across this uh, deep cover here all right and hearing frogs in the background all right, a couple more casts and we'll move our way along. All right, we reached our next point here. And uh, we are directly gonna have the sun in our face. So I think heat's gonna kick in, obviously. But let's see if we can produce some fish. Again, I'm just sitting here popping and stopping. Pop and stop. Pop and stop. Pop and stop. I'm literally giving these fish an easy free meal. There's a fish right there. Fish on. Got one. Little one. <laughs> I knew it was a matter of time. Little dink. <laughs> All right, let's get that uh, frog out of its lip. There we go. Lunker of the year goes to Thunder Dan. But let's get her on her way. She's gone. But so far, we're not skunked. We got two fish. Again, nothing of significant uh, size, but he's got to fight through all this and uh, you know, look and find and see where that big one is at. Like I said, I think our luck is going to be on that backside over there. Another fish jumping out over there. Look at all these dragonflies around here, man. That's what these fish are jumping after. God. Of course, they're all jumping right where I just came from. All right, guys, I'm, I'm working it hard here, man. It's high noon, and this fishing has died off right now. So uh, I'm going to try to trudge through for about another hour. Hopefully things pick up a little bit more uh, as we get along into this area here. But I've been casting in all of this loose stuff right here. Again, there were jumps all over the place, but nothing. Again, just trying to get on that line and allow me to bring it in to show it off to you. All right, so I'm going to throw a couple more casts. I think I've beaten the dead horse with the... Uh, uh, the nightshade, but uh, it got a few bass. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. But again, we're going to change the color up. Again, work this open area just a little bit. And again, get back over here and uh, see if we can find that lunker. All right, guys, here we go. Off with the old and on with the new. All right, so we got uh, Woody right here. Uh, that is the new color we're going to be using. Uh, again, it similarly matches the bait that's in the water right now with these bullfrogs that roll around. My hope is the uh, white belly right here, as long as, and as well the uh, yellow chin, along with the dots, might be able to attract these fish a little bit better than the darker bait did, because uh, right now the fishing is completely non-existent right now. So let's go ahead and get a couple casts out here in the open right there, and then again, we'll make our way over to the right-hand side. Guys, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right back over here. Look, see the fish? Three fish right in a row have jumped over in that area. So, you know, i got to get over there, and I've got to get one of those fish uh, before we make our move. But, uh, let's see, uh, oh, here we go. Fish on, we got one on, guys. Right there, just as I'm talking. All right. The change was almost in instantaneously. It was about five casts in, and we got a fish off of the change of color. All right. Perfect. Good deal, guys. Good deal. <laughs> All right, let's get over here on the shore. Again, nice little hook set right on the lip right there. Boom. But these fish are, are not afraid to be out in the open. All right, Woody, thank you very much for starting me off really quick here. Let's uh, get our bait off of there. Pliers back in the pocket. And this one's really feisty, it's ready to go. And Where'd she go? She's up under here. I can see her right now. Underneath here. Watch. See if he pops out. He's in there somewhere. Up. Oh, she's in there, obviously. She's gone. But again, it's that same mat that these fish are sitting underneath of. I mean, that fish really wanted that bait. I mean, it ripped the hooks right out from where it's supposed to be. So again, simple fix, man. Just squeeze the frog a little bit and pull that tail up to get it around there and again just make sure the body's in between the hooks 
and as well the feet. Just like that, you're ready to go back into action. I tell you, when, I hate when you step on some of these soft pieces of ground, because as soon as you step on it, man, all the smell and everything that's been trapped in that dirt comes right out and just wafts right up in your nose. And you're like, oh my God, what the heck is that smell? Because <laughs> that's what's going on right now, man. My olfactory senses are going absolutely insane with the stench that's coming out of this water. Look, there's another bass jumping out of here. Come on, if you're moved for dragonflies, you're in mood for a frog. <laughs> Everywhere, bro, what I need them, guys, is right on the end of my line. All right, something finally banged my woody, guys. <laughs> <laughs> not a big blow up man but it just took it and went right underneath the water with it but same thing just another pounder good hook set but uh we're gonna stop futzing with these little ones right here we're gonna make our way to the corner over where the sewer's at and we're gonna try to go where those giants are at she's gone all right we're gonna make that long walk all the way around Get into the pipe. I know there's a big one over there that's gonna be sitting here right by that stream. That's what the hope is, using the woody. Again, we got the heavier bait that's gonna come across all that cover. And again, we got those two rattles that are sitting in there to charge them up and get them up through that thick mat. All right, so we're almost halfway there, guys. The pipe is right ahead of me. But I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna go over into this opening here where all that dirt's sitting out right here. Because I don't wanna have them fish feel me walking all over this area right here and not wanting to strike try to keep all the vibrations to a minimum from my body over to here and the only vibration i want them to feel is that frog all right so that's the bottom of the ninth you got two outs and you need a run to win can we do it guys we need that big old lunker and boom perfect shot right there And again, I'm going with the heavier bait because it sits down and pushes down on his pads a little bit. And again, the key with those rattles is, again, I repeatedly say they feel that vibration coming through and hopefully they can hone accurately on that frog coming across the scum. God, missed this big massive blow up right where I'm getting ready to cast that, right there. Just right before, you'll see that line of algae is split wide open. That's where the fish was at. So I'm gonna try to get that back over there again. Fish just barely missed the bait. Oh, that was pretty right there. We finally got our big blow up, guys. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, and maybe, what else have we got going on here? Again, we got probably about 10 pounds of the crap on here, but it was a massive blow up. What do we got? Look at all this junk. Oh, <laughs> there we go. There we go, three pounds easy. Look at this. <laughs> I knew it was a matter of time. I knew it was a matter of time. Now, nah, two and a half guys, maybe. Beautiful, look at that hook set. <laughs> There's gotta be at least, look at this. That's what this fish was underneath, all of this crap. How they get through all this, I don't know, but let's get the hook off. Boom. Thank you, Mr. Bass. But again, about two and a half pounds. Here we go. And she's gone. Outstanding, beautiful blow up. Oh, thank God I'm in my air conditioned car. It was oppressively hot out there and the humidity was just sitting right on my chest. Boy, oh boy. But we were able to produce today. We got fish on both of those frogs. Using a nightshade, we got a lot of them right out there in the open area, which was kind of surprising to me because it was midday. And then I kind of figured the woody was gonna outperform the nightshade when it came to the deep cover. So it took a few casts and I finally pulled out a two and a half pounder. I thought I had like a 10 pounder because it was about another eight pound of crap all over it. But those are the things you gotta do to fight through the summer to get that bite on. It's not easy. So I mean, if you got the gumption to get out there in the heat and you got the persistence to go and find these bass in these hard to get to places, then do it guys. Because again, 
it's always going to reward you in the end if you're able to land one of this monster fish. Because uh, again, I did have a big old blow up right after that two and a half pounder. I know it had to be good three, four pounds, but it just short struck it and it never came back. So I'm going to hit myself right up the highway, man, get back up under the air conditioning of my home. Hopefully you guys have a cool, enjoyable afternoon. And as always, fish on.